Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Rob, and today we are back in Cabinet Vision, and up until this point I have kind of gone over like the, you know, kind of more of a surface level understanding of Cabinet Vision, but in this video we're going to take a little bit of a deeper a dive, and what we're going to do is I have a, a clean uh, install of 2023, and we're going to set up a frameless cabinet with the Cabineo connectors. From scratch, um, we're going to set up how I have it set up at our shop, so this is not, you know, you don't have to ultimately do it my way, but it will give you uh, a good understanding kind of how how the process kind of works together. Before we get started, I do want to go off on a little bit of a tangent, and that is the, I feel like there there are people in this world who are excellent carpenters. They can make anything and everything and then they start adding machinery and computer and then all of a sudden you can hit a wall and life can be very painful and frustrating because you know what it is you want to do but you have no idea how to make it happen. One of the reasons why I'm making this video. Uh, but uh, I want to kind of go into mindset uh, a little bit because when you're making something by hand uh, using manual equipment you can make little changes, little tweaks as you're going and you can, you know, you can kind of make real-time, on-the-fly adjustments to do whatever it is you need to do. With a computer, when you start adding machinery, you're adding a whole other layer of complexity, and so the computer needs to know exactly 1,000% what it is it needs to do. There is no variation. There's very little gray zone. Uh, you know, maybe AI in the future will fix that problem, but understanding how to feed the computer information it is 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 huge and the only reason I'm saying that is because in my experience uh, my father you know he's a really good carpenter can get by with computers but cabin vision just just flat out you know it's just a wall and it can be very upsetting and very frustrating so you just you know I just want to say that because the more you can do to learn how to communicate with computers and programs like it'll really help you uh, that being said, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get started. So cabinet vision is kind of like a spider web in the sense of you have your final assembly and then there's a lot of different layers to the web, uh, connects to different areas, pulling from the data from these areas and then, you know, till you get your final output. So what we want to do, uh, first is we want to call, we're going to say, uh, you know, we're using Cabineo connector, so we want to call that material into existence. Good news is, is that if you have a newer version of Cabinet Vision, the Cabineo is already in, it's built into Cabinet Vision. We just got to, uh, we got to make a material. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to come over here to the material, edit materials, and we're going to click that. If you see down here, we have uh, some stuff we can click, and what we want to do is we want to go to connector. And in the connector, we have a graphics, so there's really nothing here to pull from. So what we want to do is we want to change that, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to click a new material. Now, by default, you're probably going to have banding, and if we click this drop down, we have all these different things that we can select, but what we want to do is select a connector. We're going to name this connector Cabaneo 12 millimeter connector. Now I will say I highly recommend that when you start naming things just in any type of program, not just cabinet vision, you get uh, very specific with how you name things. I'm just going to go ahead. Um, you know, you don't want to name things like, you know, Rob's connector or things like that because that will not serve you well in the long run. Alright, so now that we've got that, we're going to hit next. Alright, so the, we've got a few things here. So the unit of issue, we want to keep that at each. We want cabinet vision to account for each cabineo individually. You can change this, you know, like a pair, but then it's going to get confusing because you're not going to, you really, you want a one for one representation. All right, the type, we're going to select cabineo 12. You got a, a few things you can choose from here that are pre-built in and we are going to hit finish 
voila, we have the Cabinail connector. All right, now, what the heck did we just do? Because we called in a Cabinail connector, but um, we kind of want to know, you know, this is just, you know, to increase our understanding of what it is we just called into existence. Because um, if we close out of here, you know, it's really all we need to do. But what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to double click right here. And we're going to open up this material properties. And you've got some stuff down here. Really don't need to mess with any of that. But what we want to do is we want to take a look at the model here. We're going to double click the model. And this is going to bring us into our model. And this is what is going on behind the scenes you have the cabinet connector and then the associated uh, mounting hole. All right, we've got a tree over here <clears throat> that is our assembly tree. We have our left end in our shelf, and so this represents the two parts that are kind of mated together. If we, if we expand these, uh, we can take a look further what's going on and where the model is nested in is in this primary work plane. So you have a primary and an alternate. And so this primary work plane, if we click the Lamello Cabaneo, we've got some information here. So this is where, um, you know, whoever built this model, you know, that's where they have positioned it so it functions correctly. Shouldn't have to go in and mess with any of this. Uh, not unless you know, you know exactly what you're doing and you're maybe doing some experimentation. Um, if we take a look at our alternate work plane, this is where we can see our mounting holes and what this does is if you look at your Y position and you can see it's in 30 seconds um, but if we go to uh, let's see um, this is just a general overview of these numbers I'll go into why it's important that we want to be accurate but inside middle and outside these are the positions of the those three center holes all right when it comes to accuracy, uh, setting your precision. So if you hover down on that right, it says set precision. Very important that you understand what that means because with, with a precision of, of one eighth of an inch, it's very low, very low precision. Like you couldn't really do anything, make any, any uh, re meaningful changes at that level of precision. So, you know, if we click to something like a, a higher value, you know, now when we, when we, go back and look at our uh, our settings they're different and they've got decimal places after them and I know that can be painful to look at if you're not a numbers person but it's very important that if you if you have a if you have a low precision setup like 1 8 you're gonna see numbers and it's gonna be in a rounding and so you're gonna see that number and then your your dimensions could be off and you're not gonna understand why and then you get frustrated and you gotta you know that's where you know from the ground work up, you wanted your precision set pretty high, so as you're building out your assemblies, you know, you don't, you know, get to where you're like, well, you know, I'm seeing this number, but I'm getting a different result. All right, so that being said, if you do accidentally make any changes or you just want to experiment and you don't know how to reset it back, you can always hit escape uh, and don't save any changes that you make, and then you can go back into it. Um, or if you mess up and you actually save it, you can delete that connector out and build a new one. All right, so cool. Moving on. So we've got our connector in uh, setup. Okay, so now if we take, we're just going to, uh, before we go on, we're going to hit a new job. And this is kind of how I like to de-engineer things. We're going to take a look at what all it's asking us to do so we know what parts to set up. So if we go to room, we don't need any of that cabinet. All right, so we have a construction method that we need to set up. Um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, I had made I had made one uh, earlier, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete this out so that way we can see it from the beginning. And let's go back to new job because this is what you're gonna see. So if we go to cabinets, we have 32 millimeter phrase frame. This is all the stuff that is default by default we got materials hardware so there is nothing for us to pull from so we have to start kind of constructing our our assembly methods and so if we cancel out of here 
if we see under the construction uh, area here of the of the uh, ribbon bar we can see that we've got assembly we've got connections we've got assembly a manager and a connections uh, manager all right so what we're gonna do to start if we take assembly and let's say I want to make a new assembly let's say we want to go frameless or 32 millimeter so let's say we're making a new uh, we're going to make a new assembly. It's got this section down here, connections. Well, if we hit the drop down menu, you know, unless you know what it is, the connections are, you're going to have a hard time uh, knowing what to put there because you have to have your, you know, you got to know what kind of the way that you're connecting these cabinets together. So, what we're going to do, we can still make something without filling this out now. So, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and make. Let's go ahead and make a new schedule. We'll call this the Cabaneo 12 millimeter frameless. Okay, and we're not going to put anything in the construction, I mean, in the connections. We're just going to hit OK. All right, so I guess my computer needed to think a minute on that one. Okay, there we go. Okay, so if I if I come to, to my schedule, to my assemblies, we can see that now we have this uh, Cabaneo frameless. All right, so if we hit, let's just hit OK for a second. Let's go back to new job. And I'm doing this so that way we can kind of see how everything, it's that spider web, like how everything is connected. All right, now if I go to cabinets, I have a Cabaneo 12 millimeter frameless that I can select. It has no information yet, but it, it is there. You know, at least, you know, we, we brought it in. We, we've created the shell of what we want to do, so to speak. All right, so now that we have that, we're going to cancel out of this, and we're going to start building some connections. All right, now, connections. In the world of computer coding, there is this term called soft coding. And that is where, before you do any type of coding, you take what you want to do and you write it down on a piece of paper in a logical order. It's kind of a roadmap. Uh, building cabinets is very much uh, the same way, especially when you're trying to set up a method to implement into a computer. You, you In a way, you kind of, it's not coding, but you're, you're sp you have to speak the computer's language so it is highly advisable uh at least you know from my perspective that whatever type when when you're starting to think out how am i going to put a cabinet together especially if you're new get a piece of paper out <clears throat> and start writing down on paper the whole process kind of like you know how the parts are going to be attached together is there going to be operations like dados, rabbits, drill holes, anything like that and start you building build out a map on paper so that way when you get to this stage <clears throat> you have a you kind of have a detailed uh, script in front of you. So the first connection we're going to make um, is the adjustable drill holes because in my cabinet we're going to have some adjustable shelving. I feel like Pretty common in most cabinets, so it's a good place to start. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new connection. All right, now this is where you want to be very, very specific um, on what your connection type is, because you want anybody to look at it and know exactly what uh, what type of connection it is. All right, so what we're going to do here <clears throat> is we're going to name this line bore because we're going to do line bore drilling uh, right we're going to do five millimeter in diameter by 0 0.3937 i n and we're going to say five hole okay all right so this can be a line bore five millimeter drill hole we're going to go in, it's going to be 0.3937 in my case deep, and we're going to have five holes. All right, so if we go down here to type on dado, uh, if ever, uh, 
you know, if you don't know what all these are, something to do at night when you're bored is just get on Google and start Googling what all those are because, you know, you can learn a lot by just Googling things. So I'm not going to go into what everything is individually, but we are going to do the line bore. So we're going to hit line bore because that's what we want. All right, we got a little graphic that's kind of showing us what's going on here, and it's basically saying we're going to bore some line holes. All right, so now we got to go through this window, and we're going to answer these questions. All right, specify the part side clearance. All right, for me, we're going to put point, we're going to do uh, 1 16th clearance on either side. So 0 0.0625. And you can put 1 16th and it'll do it that way, but, uh, all right, so we got, um, all right, so here's where that bore required hole, so that five, that, uh, all right, <laughs> get a little tongue tied there. All right, we're, it said, uh, select if you bore required holes or use case holes. So we're going to bore required holes on my case. And this is where we're going to set the quantity to 5. So this is where that 5 hole come in, uh, comes in in the name. So we're going to do quantity of 5. The diameter of these drill holes is going to be 5 millimeters. Hence the diameter in the name. All right, and the depth also in the name. We're going to put 0 0.03937. All right, we're going to hit next. Um, how you want to position your hole I think you know front to rear you can specify how you bring them in um, I have mine set it uh, balanced uh, and I get similar results so I'm not exactly I really don't understand um, the difference too much I really don't even know what you know I think you span you can set it but uh, we're gonna leave it at balance but I think front and rear it's gonna give you the next question um, you know the, the position and so we're gonna I'm gonna put two uh, in the position two inches and then I don't need mid holes and then the spacing so inch and a quarter spacing is pretty standard but in millimeters it's going to be 32 millimeters so let's do switch to millimeters and let's do 32 on the millimeters which I think is it's about inch and a quarter um, and that is okay so we've made that connection so we're gonna hit okay so if we go down to the bottom we've got uh, this new um, this new connection and it's going to put them down one at the other um, and you can see that there are what we did probably it looks like some of these might be exactly what we've done so we could choose that but we but I'm showing you how to do this from the from the ground up so that's why some of those look similar all right but what we don't have is the cabineos all right so we're going to make another connection and we are going to name this one. And I've got my notes here because I'm naming them exactly how we've named uh, our. So the first, the next one we're going to do is a through dado. So we're going to do a quarter inch through dado. All right, so it's going to be construction type dado. So we're going to hit next. And we're going to specify the type of this dado. This is going to be a through dado. And so that's, you know, in the name, through dado. All right. The depth of this dado, we're going to put at 0.2188. And again, these numbers can change based on your materials. But uh, um, this is where we're going to specify the depth. So we're going to hit next. So specify the width adjustment. We're going to... 0 0.01 and then on the depth adjustment we're going to put 0 0.0313 and it looks like that is the last question it's going to ask us and so now we've got a through dado construction 
Okay, so we're halfway done with our construction, so... Alright, so now let's go ahead, we're going to make a new construction, and we're going to name this one... Oh, we're going to name this Capineo Interior. And in this type of... Uh, this type is going to be a connector, and we get that uh, graphical representation. If we hit next, <clears throat> all right. So now, select the connector to apply. So the connector, this is where we are going to link that Cabaneo material that we made. So if we go over to connector, you can see that we have this cabineo, that's what we made. So kind of going back to the spider web analogy. All right, so we hit okay. We've got that in the drop down, so we're gonna hit next. All right, so we want to center this on the board <coughs> thickness, so specify the edge pos uh, position. We do want to center that, uh, specify on a miter joint. We can do the center of the joint. Do you use a fixed head horizontal boring machine? I do not, so I'm gonna hit no. Specify how to position your uh, connectors. We are gonna do front to rear. If you click through these, it should kind of give you a graphical representation, but we're gonna do front to rear. Okay, specify the number of front connectors. So this one, we're just gonna have one front connector. And specify the position of the first connector or the minimum distance. All right, let's see. We're going to put one here. Okay, and then we're going to do one rear connector. All right, specify the position of the rear connector. And we're going to do one there. Okay, max spacing, we're going to put one inch there. Uh, <clears throat> actually, no, max spacing. Okay, so what max spacing is, is how big before you need to add another connector. So I think I have it set, <coughs> excuse me, where there's a connector in the front, connector in the rear, and then once the cabinet gets so big, you're setting a spacing distance that once it, it exceeds that, it's saying, hey, we need to add another one in the middle. So we'll go 12 uh, inches there on this particular one. Um, and we are going to hit OK. All right, so we have a cabinet interior. All right, we're going to make a cabineo interior. Excuse me. So we're going to make another cabineo connector. We're going to call this cabineo case. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to apply these... Uh, we're making a separate one for the the inside of the construction and then a cabineo for the the outside so there's some smaller parts i don't fully uh i don't fully understand like like i kind of get it but this is where the uh the the programmer that i've been that i work with from time to time he kind of walked me through this and so i'm just kind of this is where i'm just going off of regurgitated information uh, versus like I understand exactly like what's going on in the background but just trust me so we're doing a cabinet interior and now we're going to do a cabinet case same deal we got to link our cabinet we're going to hit next we're going to center on thickness center joint no on the horizontal we'll do front and rear connectors we're going to do one uh, first position, connect to the minimum, let's put a 1 there. Okay, rear connectors, I have a 1. And 2 and 12. I'm just double checking that I made, that they might be the exact same. Let's see, 12 for max spacing. Mm 
Okay, so this one has a distance, a position distance of two. Um, and let's just double check on my interior. Because I might have put two, we want one. Yeah, so that has the rear connector spacing as one. And then the case has two. So I think it's just has to do with the, the smaller parts. They're going to be closer together. The cabinets. So if we hit cancel. All right, so we've got, we've made 27, 28, 29, and 30. So we've got our four connections. So now we can start setting up our assembly. All right, so if we hit close, uh, we've got the assembly. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to go to schedule. We're going to do our cabinet frameless. And we've got an assembly manager here. And if we take a look at what we got going, we've got a couple case uh, operations and connections. So let's just kind of start at the top. So we're going to kind of have to go through everything. All right, so this is where, you know, you're going to set up for each kind of individual component what it is that you want to do. You know, how are we going to build it? Going back to writing it on paper. Uh, you know, adjustable shelf, do you have banding? Maybe you have banding on the front, you know, bull nodes, I don't have any. Do you want to do the shelf with the grain? Do you align the grain? Yes. Do you have a, a distance? This is going to be when I build a cabinet, you don't want that shelf right up on the face frame, you know, so you, maybe you want it back a little, so. Maybe you want it like five inches back, you know, whatever it is that you want. You're going to go through um, all of these and you're just going to hit OK. So you're going to go through all of these and I'm not going to go through all of the case, uh, all of these because this is, uh, it's just questions, kind of like yes or no questions. All right, so operations and that's on these cases. So that's going to be you know, that's going to be pretty straightforward. You just read the question it's asking, you select what it is that you want it to do. All right, so now we come down here to operations. We have two. We have line boring and we have machining. So, if we double click line boring, uh, let's see, going through the connections. We go through line boring, it says select the case boring method that best depicts your construction. All right, so no boring holes, bore all holes, bore required holes, or bore by opening. I usually put bore the required holes, and so that is going to look at where did you place the shelf in that cabinet, and then, um, you know, that's where it's going to drill those holes. We're going to you can align or float. Ours are set at float. Um, you can kind of see what it's doing with the graphical uh, representation there. We're going to hit OK. All right, when it comes to machining, are your miter joints adjusted for part thickness? Yes. All right, so that was it. Okay, so now we come down to our connections. And this is where we're going to really start getting in and kind of building out our assembly method. All right, so let's go. We're just going to start. Okay, so adjustable shelf. All right, question one. How does your adjustable shelf in your finished end connect? Well, we, if we look at here, so on these joint, you're going to have uh, a drop down. Some are going to have options to select, some won't. This one doesn't. However, under our connection, we want to pick the uh, we want to pick the the one we just made, and so this is going to be the line bore because we want line bore because um, that's what we set up. And I believe because this was I named them the same. I believe it's this second one, so we're going to go with that. At any rate, like you understand what we're doing, you know, we we built the connection and and then we are assigning it. We're attaching it. Okay, how does your adjustable shelf in your skin attach again? <coughs> Line, bore, we'll just do number two. 
All right, how does your adjustable shelf and your unfinished end? Well, for me, it's also going to be a line bore. All right, your adjustable shelf and your sub end. So we're also going to use that when we drill holes. Adjustable shelf and a no end. So we're also going to not that one. We're going to do some line boring. Finish back. We are going adjustable shelf attaches to a finish back. We're going to also, if you want shelves in the back, line bore number two. All right, unfinished back. We can do a line bore. Uh, clip back support. We personally don't do that, so I'm just going to skip that. We're going to do a partition. We're going to do that same one. Divider. We wanted to, in my case, we wanted to, yep, and then bull nose. Uh, we don't, I don't do anything with a bull nose personally. So we're going to hit OK. So we've got that adjustable shelf set. So now we're going to move on to the deck, which is the floor of our cabinet box. So we take a look here. I am going to choose extend finished end to bottom of face. And we're going to leave zero in the adjustment. And for the connection, we are going to pick our cabineo case. All right, so deck and skin end, we are going to, let's see here, um, extend skin to f the bottom of floor, so bottom of deck, um, and then we're going to do zero for the adjustment, and then we are also going to do the cabineo case for the connection here. All right, how does your deck and your finished end? So deck and finished end. So we're going to, let's see here. Um, uh, the floor and, let's see, we are going to, for no end, finished end, applied end. We're gonna do bottom of face and then we're also going to do the cabinet of case all right and then <clears throat> deck in the applied end we're going to connect to sub floor oh connect floor to sub end connect deck to sub end and then we're going to use the cabinet case as well all right so let's see the next one so how does your deck and your applied end so we're going to connect the deck to, um, let's see, to ex extend, floor and applied end, ex extend, uh, applied end to bottom of face, All right in the adjustment, we're going to leave that at zero. All right, deck and sub end, so floor and sub end. We're gonna extend sub end to bottom of face for me. All right, and then what connection do you apply your deck for a no end? We are going to floor attaches to part, deck attaches to part, and we are going to leave that connection as none for me. All right, floor and finished back, or deck and finished back. We are going to extend floor, or extend deck to back of case. And we are going to leave the connection there as none and the adjustment as none. Configure your deck and unfinished back. Uh, we are going to extend the deck to back of case. All right, and we are going to leave that at zero. How does your deck and the unfinished back connect? The reason I'm getting kind of confused is on the earlier version, it says floor and not deck, and this is like a newer one, so I don't know if it was set up that way or if this is just the new one or what, so I'm trying to keep deck and floor 
straightened out in my head. So how does your deck and the unfinished back connect? So we're going to attach the unfinished back to the top of the floor. This is deck and then for this we are going to use our quarter inch through dado for our unfinished back. All right, next we've got floor and nailer. We're going to um, attach to top of floor or top of deck and we are going to leave none in there. All right, how does your deck and your clipped back support? We are going to leave the adjustment at zero. And for our, our connection, we are going to use the Cabaneo interior. So just so that we make, so clip to support the floor. So we want extend clipped back support to floor, extend clip back support to floor. All right, and then that's when we want our cabinet interior. All right, how does your deck and your partition? All right, we're gonna attach partition to top of floor, attach partition to top of deck. In this case, um, connection, we're gonna leave this partition connection as none, but the alternate floor, we are going to, uh, alternate deck attaches to partition, we're gonna put this as the cabinet interior. All right, how does your deck and your divider connect? Your floor and divider. So mine is going to attach to the top of the floor. So to the top of the deck on here. And we are going to uh, leave our divider connection as none, but our alternate, which is the deck attaches to the divider. So we want the operation to be here for the main body of the cabinet and not the divider itself. So that's what we're gonna do. Then we're gonna hit OK. And whew, boy, we got through that. All right, you can see it's a little bit to go through this and I apologize for the length of the video, but it's just, it's what it takes to get, just what it takes to get these things set up. Wish there was a simpler way to do it. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at our divider. All right, I apologize, I heap, have to keep going back to my notes, but there is no way I would remember all of this. Um, so, that is why we are, I'm having to look at, a look through this. All right, so divider. Okay, so, how does your divider and your top connect? So, divider and top. Uh, detach divider. Okay, let's see. Divider and top. So our divide divider to bottom of top. All right, our top connection. We are going to use the cabineo interior. Our our top stretcher. We're going to use the cabineo interior. I'm not going to do anything with the web frame. And then here, we're both going to do Cabaneo interior for that. All right, so how does your divider and your deck connect? So divider and floor for me. So we're going to go to the top of the floor. Um, and we are going to use the Cabaneo interior for that one as well. All right, so how does your divider in the unfinished back? So in my case, it is, okay, attach divider to unfinished back. That's exactly what we're doing. We're just gonna attach it, and I'm not gonna use anything for the connection there. We're just gonna, because uh, I'm using a quarter inch back, so it'd be hard to, to machine anything. So we're just gonna slide ours down into that dado and that divider is just going to have to butt up against that. This one we are going to keep it at uh, divider attaches to, to front toe and I'm not going to put anything in the connections. Alright, the divider extends to the 
floor. Let's see here. Um, divider in back toe, divider in back toe. Okay, so divider attaches to back toe. We'll keep it at that, and then we're not going to put, I'm not going to put anything uh, for the connection. We actually build our toe kicks separate from the box. All right, so divider and, and fixed shelf. All right, so divider attaches to shelf, and we're actually going to um, put the Cabaneo interior. So if it's a fixed shelf, we want the uh, the cabaneo. Um, actually, what so we have shelf connection shelf. Right on this one, the sh how does your divider and shelf connect? Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll just leave it at that for now. See how it goes. Okay, so then divider and fixed shelf. Okay, we'll also put the cabinet interior and divider and uh, stretcher. So the drawer stretcher and the divider. Divider attached to drawer stretcher. And this is all. Let's just divider. We're gonna leave that at. We're gonna leave that at none. Let's see if we how would we do this? So if you had a stretcher, I guess you could do cabaneo, but we're, we're just gonna leave this at, at none for now. So I'm gonna hit okay. Alright, so we're gonna go to drawer stretcher. So we can see that that's that piece right here. Alright, so we're gonna do we're gonna leave that at that, because there's only one setting, and we're gonna do Cabaneo interior. I'm going to do the same to here. Cabaneo interior. And we're going to, how does your drawer stretcher in the unfinished end? We're going to also do Cabaneo interior. All right, let's go to the next. How does your uh, drawer stretcher and sub end connect? Leave that at that, and we're going to also do Cabaneo interior. Alright, drawer stretcher for a no end. I'm going to put none on there. Divider, drawer stretcher divider. You could, you could go with Cabaneo interior for that. We'll hit next um, to a partition drawer. You could also probably do the Cabaneo interior for that. We'll see how that goes. Um, we'll hit OK. All right, our finished back. All right, let's take a look at what we got here. OK, so we are going to, OK, so back and top. Uh, let's see, how does your finished back and your top connect? I think we want to go to extend the finished back to the top of top. I think that is it. I think we don't want anything for the adjustment. And we don't want anything for the connections. So we have the back and the deck, uh, extend <clears throat> deck to back of case. Oh, that's what we want to do because we're going to do it the depth. We're going to have like these nailers back there. So let's extend to the back of the case. Let's do nothing for the um, connection. How does your finished back and your finished back connect? Well, that's a good question. We're going to say it attaches to the finish back because I'm not mitering anything. And for the connection, we're going to go ahead and say none. All right, how does your finished back and unfinished back 
So this will be exactly the same for me. So this is basically one's just going to butt over the other. And so finished back and finished end. Let's see, finished back. We have the Dutchman corner, extend the finish back to the outside of the face, extend, finish back to the outside of the finished end, extend finished end to back of case, and extend finished end to back of back. So we're going to probably do back of case, because that sounds about right. And nothing for the connections there. Okay, how does your finished back and your skin connect? Hello, hello, hello. How does your finished back and your skin end connect? Let's see, finished back, we'll go to back of case. And again, we're going to leave nothing for the connection and nothing for the uh, adjustment. And then finish back to the unfinished end. I'm going to go ahead and do finished end attaches to back and none for the connection. So we'll hit OK. So now we're going to take a look at our finished end. If we double click here. <clears throat> All right, how does your finished end in the top connect? So if our finished end is here, probably ooh, top of top. That looks about right. All right, so the adjustment, I'm gonna say zero, but on the top, let's go ahead and do Cabaneo case. And on the stretcher, I'm gonna do the interior. And let's go to the next. <clears throat> How does your finished end and deck uh, connect? So let's go to uh, extend finish into bottom of deck and we'll go ahead and do I guess it's already in there Cabaneo case all right how does your finished in and finished back connect Let's see so extend finished into back of case <clears throat> we're not going to do anything there all right you finished in an unfinished back let's see into back of case we'll do the same thing and let's not put anything in the connections how does your finished end adjust when there is no back to the back of case makes the most sense all right so how does your applied end and your finished back connect so extend applied into back of case we'll go ahead and keep that because we'll have a nailer all right, how does your sub end in your finished back? Um, sub in and we'll keep that. How does your finished end in nailer connect? Okay, so the nailer attaches to the finished end. That seems about right. All right, let's hit OK. All right, so let's go to our fixed shelf. All right, so now how does your fixed shelf in your finished end connect? So let me see here. Let me make sure that what I'm looking at here. Mm -hmm. Alright, here we go. Okay, so all right, so how does your fixed shelf and your finished end connect? So the fixed shelf attaches to the finished end and we are going to use the Cabaneo interior for this one. All right, how does your fixed shelf and your skin end? All right, we're gonna go ahead and fix shelf and then we're gonna go ahead and do a Cabaneo interior. All right, we have unfinished end go ahead with Cabaneo interior. 
shelf in sub in. We're gonna go ahead and do a cabinet interior as well. What connection do you apply to your fixed shelf for a no end? Well, we'll just do cabinet interior as well. Okay. How does your fixed shelf in your unfinished back? Um, okay, we are not going to. Okay, so attach. Okay, fixed shelf to unfinished back. Extend fixed shelf to back of case. Extend fixed shelf to back of unfinished back. So we're going to go ahead and leave it here. And we're not going to put anything for the connection. All right, clip back support as well. Let's see. We are going to... We'll go ahead and do cabinet interior. That's what we've got it set on. All right, now we've got shelf and partition. Okay, that is also going to be the cabinet interior. Okay, fixed shelf and divider. We're gonna also do cabinet interior. And we're not going to do anything for the bull nose because I don't do anything with the bull nose. All right, so front skirt. Okay, so front skirt. Let's see. So if we're looking down at the front skirt, so I honestly don't have this set up because I don't use a front skirt. So basically, I think you kind of, you guys get the idea. So. As you go through these, so that way this video doesn't drag on too too much longer, um, you know, we, we set up the connections and so now we're going through and we're assigning them at, you know, where we want them. And, you know, if you go through, you know, well, we made it all the way down to, to this front skirt and I think, you know, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through these all one by one because I think once you get started, you'll kind of get the the hang of it and you'll you'll be able to kind of, you know, go through and and start to figure some of this stuff out. So, I'm going to uh I'm going to pause this video here and I'm going to go through um and just finish this up and and then I'll uh I'll see you um here here in a second. Okay, so I went through everything and I got it assigned pretty much how I want it. Uh, one thing I did want to point out is that whenever you go into one of these, you have right up here this tab that says default. And as we go through everything, it says default. There's also a plus sign here. And what that plus sign is, is that you can assign specific, uh, you can basically develop like a, a, a sub uh, category of cabinets that you want to apply parameters to that you can separate them out like you can say you know I want my uppers to retain this and then I want my you know my tall cabinets to retain or to use this other connection and so it's a way to kind of create a new profile uh, inside of, of this uh, assembly manager so that's just something to keep in mind all right, so I got everything uh, done that I, I think it's right, but the beauty of this is, you know, once you, you know, you start playing around with it, you can find out, you know, where you might need to make corrections, and you can go back into the assembly manager and make any changes that you might need. So we're going to hit OK, and it is going to ask me if I want to save my changes, and we're going to go yes. So... My computer's needing a second to think. All right, there we go. So now, if we say new job, let's just kind of see what we've got going um, to this point. So I'm not going to mess with anything in here. We're going to just go straight. So I've got my cabinets, and I've got my Cabinet 12. We haven't done anything with, with any of this yet, but we're going to hit OK. We're just going to kind of see what we've got going. What we've got going on here. See if our cabineos are working. Oh, so we're going to go to custom cabinets. And so let's just pull a cabinet out here. And remember, we have no, uh, we've assigned no materials to anything or anything yet. So this is just 
bringing the cabanales into existence, creating some uh, connections for that, and um, and yeah, so so we can see that it is working. All right, so let's take let's take uh, let's clear this out a second. So let's go to case. Uh, let's add a top to this. So let's say full top. It's a base cabinet. Some people have tops, some people don't. But we've got a full top. And we can see that we've got cabaneos now. Now these are these are done on the outside. Um, so if you don't you know, if you don't want to see them on the inside, but I believe we can switch the machining surface because right now it's top. So let's see if we can figure that out. So we've got this. So let's close this out. And let's go back to our assembly. Let's go to our schedules or cabaneo. Let's go to our interior or exterior case. Let's go to top. All right, so it's going to ask us some questions, and we're in the case and not the connection. So what we're trying to look for a setting that asks us which side do we want a machine, uh, with the machining to be done. So if you use a material with the one finished side up, do you or in some finished side? Okay, this is the top. If you use a material with one finished side, do you orient the finished side of your top up or down? We actually want it down because that's going to be the inside of the cabinet. We want to see the finished, most likely, I'm assuming. Okay, enter the width of your front stretcher. We do need that. Let's say four inches. Let's say four inches. So we do need that as well. We're not going to mess with the web frame or that enter the distance uh, from the amount of the top to the edge of the case oh, let's 0.75 inches there okay this is what we're looking for which face do you want the machining on the top which is where we're seeing the cabaneos but let's say we want it on the interior um, or let's say the top we do want it on the exterior Okay, so this is where you're going to kind of have to think about the material you're using and how you're going to machine it because you really need to machine it. You know, it, it all needs to come off of the same the same side or you want to, you, you got to kind of strategize like do I want the machine to be done on one side? Uh, I don't want to do double-sided operations. So what I'm going to actually do is we're going to go interior because we want, I'm going to hit OK. So if we want to go to the floor, let's walk, go through the same process real quick. Uh, distance from the deck to the edge of the case. Uh, let's see. We want to, let's just leave that. Okay, so no build deck. If you use a material with one finished side, the finished side is going to be up. Again, this is all, a lot of times you're using, like if you're using melamine, double-sided melamine, whatever, okay, but, so let's do the interior of this uh, deck. Let's say, so we hit okay, we hit okay, we're gonna save changes. Let it think, let's gonna do its thing. Okay, so if we create a new job, Let's just go to cabinet. So we want to pick our cabaneo. And if, you, if you're doing something over and over and over again, you can go down you can set it all up and hit save as system default. And then whenever I open this up, it'll say cabaneo 12. It'll default to the frameless. All right, so if we hit OK, let's put another wall in. OK, let's take, let's do a custom cabinet. Let's do... Let's do a base cabinet, and what we're going to do, let's add, let's, we're going to delete everything out for one, just to see the cabaneo. So let's go to case. Normally, the reason I don't have a top on this is because we don't normally build our base cabinets with a top, but I'm going to go ahead and put one on there. 
So we can see that we now have Cabaneos along the bottom on the inside because we changed the orientation and then the top. So that looks good. You know, and so let's take the, let's, let's go ahead and if I can remember how to do this, let's see if we're doing it. Okay, so we have not set up anything on our drawers yet, and we're probably not going to in this video just because it takes a long time. But on the frameless, there's a trick. There's a trick to editing this, and I, we're going to go fix shelf for our drawers. There, there, there's a trick to it, a little bit of a trick, but we're, we're not going to worry about that too much. We just wanted to get the um we just want to get these cabinets going in fact we want to make these let's make these drawer stretchers so we're going to click we're in the interior view we're going to make those drawer stretchers and they are not showing up let's see There, there, there's a, there was a trick to getting those stretchers to show up. But first off, okay, so let's let's get rid of everything a second, and let's make sure our shelf holes work. All right, so we want to make this an adjustable shelf, and we are not seeing any shelf holes. All right, so. That's a problem. We want adjustable shelves, and we want to see the shelf holes. So let's uh, let's save this as we'll save this as test job. And before before I do anything, let's uh, I'm just going to do a quick update of of everything, just so that way I know that our changes have been implemented. Sometimes it needs to think a second. Alright, so we still we have no shelf holes. Okay, so let's let's take a look. Yes, yeah, so we want to save that. Okay, so if we go into our assembly, let's go into our interior, so our shelf, let's see, let's just go look through here, D distance between, we're going to put 5 inches, okay, 5 inches, no, no shelf nosing, hit OK, alright, let's come to operations, let's go to our line boring. Okay, let's take a look at our line boring. So, okay, so it had no boring holes. Oh, man, I could have sworn I had this, but I must have not saved it when I went through everything. Okay, so we want it to bore holes, and we want that. Okay, so let's hit OK. We want to save that. Okay, so now let's open our test job up. Before we do anything, I'm going to go ahead and just update everything. You don't need to do everything, but just to be safe, I always do. Okay, so let's take a look at still no shelf holes. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look. And right, so let's go back into our assembly. Okay, now frameless. Let's go down to our adjustable shelf. Okay. I must have not saved all this when I went through them, but that's okay. This is good that you're seeing this because this is this is what the troubleshooting process is. So we want to we want to choose our through dado. 
unfinished end, we want our through dado. Sub end, we want a through dado. No end, we'll go ahead and put that there. Shelf, we're not doing anything to the back. Nothing to the back. Not going to worry about the... We'll do the partition. We'll do the divider. We're going to hit OK. We're going to hit OK. We're going to save this. And just out of curiosity, once that's saved, so I just want to make sure that... Just want to make sure that's sticking. It's retaining everything. Because I thought I did that. Okay, so okay, so now let's <clears throat> let's go back in and take a look. Because hopefully I'm not leading you guys astray. I feel alright, so let's just Okay, fingers crossed we have some drill holes. Okay, that looks like it's a fixed shelf. So let's go in, let's turn this into... Hmm. Hmm, hmm, You know what? I'm an idiot. <laughs> it's been a long day and I've had... Uh, man, it's just the eclipse, man. Maybe it's the eclipse. I'm going to blame the eclipse. That put dados in the side. <clears throat> it's not dados that we want. We're looking for drill. We're looking for drill uh, holes. So we're gonna go back to this shelf. So we're we're looking for this setting, the line bore. We're not drilling dados. Which what you what you saw would be a way to do fixed shelves. You know, you can put that dado through. So we're picking that line bore. Uh, that line bore uh, connection that we made earlier. All right. Okay. Now. All right. At least we know our connection worked with that one. Ha you know the quarter inch uh, through dado, but we don't want that through dado. So let's go back into our test job. Let's do. Okay, we're gonna hit OK. Let it update. Oh, perfect. Okay, now I was worried there for a minute. So now we've got our shelf holes. But yeah, I'm actually good we, we did that because you know a lot of the process, man, you're going in and you're changing stuff and you're going back out and making it work and, and you know and trying to change it again. So I think we're gonna leave it at here at this video because you know we've got a box built, we've got you know, we brought the cabin nails in, we've got them placed where we want. You know, I think we're on the right right track, but you know, for the sake of time we're gonna cut this video and then in the next video we're gonna do the doors, drawers. Uh, you know all the other components and I think let me Let me just I think I've got to figure out I got to remember how to bring the drawer stretchers in there's a trick to it and I think I think there's a, there's there's a trick to it and I got I got to uh if you see we're in 3D view, we don't have a drawer stretcher. And um, so I'm going to work on that. So in the next video, we're, we're going to bring the drawer stretchers in because most likely you're going to want them, not always. But but we, we, we build ours with drawer stretchers. And then we'll start figuring out how to size the drawer boxes and everything, though. But so. If you stuck around this long, I apologize that it's so long, but there's just a lot to go over. So thanks for watching, and we will see you, or I'll see you in the next video.